Waves of Patriot Guard riders turn out in near record numbers in Anderson County to honor a female veteran of World War II. Present her. She was a veteran who wanted no credit for having done it. Mavis Kohler joined the Navy in early 1942, serving stateside as a pharmacist mate, part of a group of almost 100,000 women known as the WAVES, short for Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service. She was stationed in Washington, D.C. WAVES did not go overseas. And she worked in the naval clinics, the naval dispensaries, and naval hospitals. Interestingly enough, they first came to her and told her they were going to train her to train air traffic controllers because she had a teacher's degree. And they came back to her the next day and said, you can't do it. And she said, well, what do you mean I can't do it? She's in New York City. What do you mean I can't do it? They said, well, you have a southern accent. Nobody will understand you. <laughs> till, till, till she was 99, she was offended by that. Feisty is one word her daughter uses to describe her military mom. Early on in life, Mavis wasn't about to let her two older brothers outdo her. She sat in her college dorm in Kentucky her senior year and heard Roosevelt's speech when Pearl Harbor was attacked. Her two brothers went in, but she had already signed a contract to teach back in her hometown. So she had a one-year contract in a two-room schoolhouse where she was going to teach fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And she was principal because she had a college degree. But there was nothing her brothers could do she couldn't do. And so in March of that year, before she finished teaching, she enlisted. In almost three years of service, the Kentucky native rose to the rank of pharmacist mate second class, almost unheard of for women in that era. I, I thought of her as a mom. She wasn't a veteran, but after the war, they took off their uniforms, they hung them up in the closet, they put on their civilian clothes, and they went about creating a life. And she married, she had three kids, she turned a house into a home, she taught, she was bluebird leader, campfire leader, she was involved in local politics, uh, she was a gardener. She, she just lived a good life. Without asking for credit, without standing up and saying, see me, she just did her duty. What I think has hit me the most is I came out into the workforce in the 70s when women took jobs that, for the first time that men had just done. I went on to the editorial staff of a newspaper. They hadn't had a female in that job in 150 years. So we get a lot of credit, the, the, I'll say the girls of the late 60s, 70s, and 80s. But when I was thinking about it just last night, I don't get any credit. It's the woman who raised me because that military service gave her the leadership, the grit, the determination. She never met a challenge she wouldn't meet head on. She never met a problem she wasn't willing to solve. And she did it all with grace and dignity. And I think that's what, it was that generation that passed on to us the changes that we were able to make. Her daughter says Mavis Kohler was humble, never wanting to claim the title of military veteran. She went so far as to tell organizers of the Veterans Day Parade, don't put me in it. It should be about the boys. Ready. But this service helped ensure people in East Tennessee paused to honor a 99-year-old veteran who happened to be a woman who also helped change the world.